The Houston Rockets have started the season with a 2-10 record, and they are currently on course to suffer the indignity of being the first team in history to finish bottom of the NBA three years in a row. There is one bright spot, however, and it's been the surprising and so far pretty remarkable success of a three-man lineup off the bench, which has affectionately been dubbed the Goon Squad, or as I like to call it, the lineup of chaos. KJ Martin, Usman Garuba, and Tara Eason were selected by the Rockets in the 2020, 2021, and 2022 NBA drafts, respectively. And while they are continuing to find their niche in a crowded Houston forward rotation, it's when they play together that they look their best. This three man lineup currently has a plus 31 net rating, which, along with a handful of other lineups around the league, puts it in the 100th percentile according to Cleaning the Glass. The usual caveats apply, they've only played 60 minutes together, it's early in the season, and they do have some fairly obvious weaknesses, which we will show, but every time this trio steps on the court for Houston, there is an immediate and obvious energy shift, something this young, struggling team badly needs. We look at last night's close Rockets loss to Toronto to look deeper at this lineup, and the trio came onto the court with a slender four-point lead. A quick Jalen Green bucket extended the lead immediately, and Usman Gruber does a great job on the positioning on his pick and roll, deterring the drive and pull up. Jalen recovers, and Tara Eason makes a decent contest, and the Rockets force a miss. They unfortunately cough a ball up on the other end immediately, and get a little lost in transition, but KJ Martin makes this stunning recovery, although Toronto still manages to score. KJ's shot blocking either in transition or helping over from the weak side may be the best in the league, and we'll see more of it in this video. On offense here you can see some of the spacing issues that will naturally come with this three-man lineup, none of whom will demand much attention on the perimeter from the opposition scouting report, but with Garuba in the dunker spot and Tori Eason sneaking in for the rebound, they quickly fill up the paint and Garuba is just relentless on the boards and they get the tip in. Back on defense, Tori Eason does a good job stopping the drive here, and they smartly ignore 18% three-point shooter Precious Achua, who misses the shot. A great team effort for the rebound leads to a hit-ahead pass for a KJ Martin slam. It was a quick, loud, mini-run from the Rockets, which forced Nick Nurse to call a timeout. As things are coming easy to the Rockets. Toronto runs their ATO, and Houston does a good job staying with the off-ball movement, and Torrey is really solid here in the post, although Scotty Barnes is doing well to back him down. But look at Usman Garuba, ready to help by ignoring the non-shooter, forcing Barnes to take a tough shot. Houston runs a Spain pick and roll, which leaves Jalen Green open at the top of the key, but Kevin Porter Jr. is slow to make the pass out, so Houston resets and Jalen gets a free lane to the rim. He misses, but again it's Usman Garuba coming out of nowhere to keep the play alive, and they just about beat the shot clock. This lineup is currently rebounding an absolutely absurd 50% of its misses. Whatever spacing issues they may have matters little when they get that many second and third chances, and they're doing it despite none being taller than 6 foot 8. The Rockets switch a lot on defense with this lineup, and Scotty Barnes centers a mismatch on Porter in the post, but look how many Rockets are in the paint when we pause it here, and it's Usman Garuba again helping out on the shot, this time swatting it away. The Rockets get a stop on the late shot clock eve, and then they go into an Eric Gordon Garuba pick and roll. Garuba slips, and short roll passing has proven to be one of his best skills, so he easily finds KJ Martin, who is hitting just about enough of these from deep to be at least a fairly reliable knockdown shooter, along with everything else he brings. On defense, Houston is switching again, and look at the help from the elbows as Tari Houston makes this shot even tougher. So far, the Raptors are barely getting any shots that don't have two Rockets players contesting it. Up on the other end of the court, Tori Eason attacks a closeout but misses the tough double clutch layup and the Raptors are on a fast break, but KJ Martin takes another scalp with this incredible block. The denial on Eason running the floor and... Fast break Houston and Tori Eason makes amends with the finish. A four point lead has extended to 11 thanks to the efforts of the Houston bench. They stayed in to start the second quarter and Deuzman Garuba cuts for the dunk while the Raptors defense is sleeping and on defense they again try to shrink the floor and keep the Raptors out of the middle. But it's important to know your personnel and KJ probably needs to stick a bit tighter to 40% three point shooter Otto Porter here. Now we skip ahead to late in the third for the return of a lineup of chaos and Houston's lead has vanished, with Toronto now up 80 to 75. The Rockets immediately get a stop with some good chasing by Porter with a shot clock ticking down and Houston tries to push the pace early but gets turned away and the ball is thrown back to Tari Houston who just excelled when driving right from the top of the key in this position for LSU last year, and finishes well. 
On defence play, close attention to Garuba's positioning here in the pick and roll, as he effectively defends two players while Kevin Porter Jr. gets taken out by the screen. In fact, it's all good, I'll play it twice, and this is just textbook defending. Off a rebound, Houston pushes the pace again, and the Raptors' defence is scrambling. They pretty quickly find the wide open KJ Martin, who drains a three. It took just 51 seconds for the Rockets' lineup to tie the game with a plus five swing. A short while later on offense, we can see how Houston likes to utilize Usman Gruber from time to time as a play starter at center. He's one of their best handoff and screen guys and consistently gets separation from guard or forces switches, although on this occasion Toronto was switching willingly. They run this action until Kevin Porter Jr. gets a mismatch he wants and he takes a free. He misses, but of course the Rockets get the offensive board, which leads to a cutting dunk from Tari Eason. Toronto looks to wrestle back control of the game and slowed their offense down to pick the right mismatch. And KJ Martin is probably the best bet out of Houston's trio of forwards as probably the weakest out on the perimeter. He has poor positioning here on the switch and gets easily beaten and Gruber makes a valiant effort at the rim but Toronto gets a whistle. Next time we have Gruber defending 1v1 and you can't defend much better than this. And if there is one signature play we saw from Torrey last year for LSU, it was the top of the key strip leading to a one-man fast break, although he will definitely want this one back. He's only played 12 games, but Torrey is already one of the best pickpockets in the league, and with 1.4 steals a game, he's 26 in the NBA. This would be impressive on its own, if not for the fact that he's only playing 18 minutes a game, and nobody else above him in the steal leaderboard has played less than 25, most well into the 30s. Per 36 among players who have played over 200 minutes, Eaton is second in the NBA behind only OG and Anobi, averaging 2.8 steals. Again on defence you can see the Rockets strategy to pack the paint and force Toronto to make swift accurate kick out passes to beat the closeout, which some teams will be able to do, but on this occasion Toronto struggles with it and Houston can rotate and contest. They get unfortunate with a bounce on the rebound, but by this point Torrey Eason is just absolutely everywhere and helps recover the ball. Houston throws up a three in their early offense, which misses, but by now you'll be used to the sight of one of Houston's forwards flying in out of nowhere, and this time it's KJ with the board. They reset and Torrey attempts a tough drive and finish, which misses, but of course Houston fights for the rebound and gets a third chance from the out of bounds play. And they get rewarded with a backdoor cut, giving them an easy layup. Houston has a gluttony of young players, and the future of many is far from certain. They already have a roster squeeze, and with a war chest of cap space next summer and the impending loss of their 2024 pick to Oklahoma City, the front office will be depending on the cavalry arriving in free agency or by trade for Houston to add some older players in their primes to really push this team forward. That's partly why this lineup has been so effective. Neither KJ Martin, nor Tori Houston, nor Usman Garuba is guaranteed minutes on this team next season. With Jay Shante and Bruno Fernando currently out through injury, they aren't even guaranteed minutes in a few weeks if and when the roster gets back to full strength. Every minute, every possession, they are fighting and scrapping for their NBA careers. They bring hustle and energy off the bench and give Houston a shot in the arm, and they complement each other perfectly. Gruber is easily Houston's best pick and roll defender, and Tari Houston is one of the best rookies out on the perimeter and can guard multiple positions. KJ is one of the fiercest weak side helpers in the league and will have a Hall of Fame worthy shot blocking highlight reel by the end of his career. Against Toronto, they benefited from packing the paint and contesting shots, but against more spaced out offences, each can still hang 1v1, if not always yet consistently. On offence, KJ and Tari have shown promise with their three point shots, and both are very effective cutters, although don't always pick the right spots yet. And Garuba is a fantastic screen setter and short roll passer, who needs to work on his hands as a catcher. They all have strengths, they all have weaknesses, but so far, they have been by far the most fun lineup I've watched in Houston for a very, very long time. And if you keep playing like this, the journey to the 2023 draft lottery, which we are all waiting for, will at least be a little bit fun to watch along the way.